I first encountered the story of Octavius Cato when I read the book Tasting Freedom, which is a wonderful book about his life and about life in Philadelphia at that time. And Cato grew up in Philadelphia as a child. Uh, and his whole history was in Philadelphia. He was educated at the Institute of Colored Youth, the predecessor of Cheney University. He was a major in the National Guard. He helped recruit black soldiers who fought in the Civil War. And once they came back from the war, he began the fight for civil rights. He helped to desegregate public transportation across Pennsylvania. He also helped to galvanize the black male vote. Uh, once black men won the right to vote through the 15th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution, in addition to all of this, he was a shortstop and an organizer of an all-black uh, baseball league here in Philadelphia. My hope is that someday every child in Philadelphia and every child in America will know as much as Octavius Caddo as they do about George Washington, Benjamin Franklin, and Dr. Martin Luther King. Tragically, on Election Day in 1871, a day of racially charged rioting, Octavius Cato was murdered by Frank Kelly only steps from his home on South Street. That case, you know, the, the murderers who did it in plain sight got away with it. Uh, they were white guys, and um, I think many people held on to that story in Philadelphia. And I was asked to write a piece that involved the Philadelphia Orchestra gospel choir from Philadelphia, made up of many different churches, with Barbara Walker. He says it's going to be a 250-piece choir, and you're going to be singing lead. And I'm like saying to myself, yeah, all right, mm-hmm. And we're going to be at the Man Music Center, and we're going to have, be with the Philadelphia Symphony Orchestra. And I'm like, OK, this is going to happen. And it happened a year later. <laughs> On account of race, color, or previous condition of servitude. After the performance, I kept in contact with a lot of the people that were involved in it, especially in the choir, who really um, told me how involved they were, how much they enjoyed it, and that we should try to record it for real. The conductor, Andre Raffel, is also very enthusiastic. He conducted the premiere. It's a piece unlike anything I've ever conducted. Uh, that's because of the historical significance of the piece, and also because of the way it fuses together uh, different styles, from classical to jazz to gospel to pop music. Uh, and it does it all in the framework of telling Cattle's story. So it, it's a fascinating work. You know, there was such an incredible feeling from that performance that it seemed important to find a way to share it uh, worldwide. And so what we look to do now is to try to find a way to record this wonderful work. Especially given the political climate today, it's just important to keep on reiterating this fact that you know, all men are created equal, that this attempt to divide is really not what this country is about. You know, as a musician, I've seen that maybe there's a way through music to sort of express that feeling and that wish for people to connect and to say no, to, to resist this type of, these types of appeals to hatred and division and stereotyping and racism. Cato uh, was not only an important figure in Philadelphia history, but in U.S. history. And because of who he was, what he meant in terms of being a civil rights activist, a voting rights activist, it is history which needs to live. And one of the ways it can live musically is through this recording. When the way the world is today, we have to continue to let this le legacy live on of who he was. And um, so another uh, uh, Octavius Cato will be here in the future and we'll tell him, tell him, come on, we gotta do this. We're not gonna stand for this. This has to go down now.